The alternate property allows you to have a run by action run when you right click on the drag or long press on the mobile device. In this example, let's add this property to the pink drag and specify we want to show the help section to the player by using the help action. We'll also remove the drag handle property we added before so it doesn't confuse or interfere with this test. So now if we run the game and right click on the pink square, we can see that the help section shows up. When you're using this property for games on mobile devices, you might want to tweak a config setting in RunPy to set how long the player needs to hold a finger on the screen for it to be counted as a long press. So when you're testing a game and you feel like the long press could be detected in a shorter or longer time, you can tweak it to your liking. To do that, you would use the code define config.longpress underscore duration and set the number of seconds that needs to pass for the press to be counted as a long press. The default value for this in RunPy is 0.5 seconds. There are quite a few drag properties that requires you to make Python functions in order to work with, and these often give you the required functionality that many are specifically looking for with the drag and drop system. In this section of the tutorial, I show you the basics of how to set up Python functions and create drags with Python code instead of RunPy script for use with the drag and drop system. The first thing we'll have a look at, which will be useful later, is to create drags and drag groups using Python variables. For some of the functionality we'll go through, we'll need to be able to access drags via Python objects, which is why it will be important to know how to do this. For this example, I have created four variables, which will contain the four drags we have in our screen, and I named these according to the colors. Now to create a drag using Python code, we will use the drag class, so we write drag and then two round brackets. Then we need to supply the information about the drags inside the brackets. As you might remember, I mentioned earlier in the tutorial that the D parameter should be used when creating drags using Python to give it a child displayable. So for these drags, we will add solid displayables and specify the colors the same way we did inside the screen. We also need to resize them to 250 pixels so they don't take up the entire screen. Now the other properties of a drag will also use parameters. For this example, I'll specify the drag name and drag race properties. Then lastly, we need to position the drags so we can add the align property and use the same values we did inside the screen. We are also going to need a drag group to put these drags into, so we'll lastly create a variable for that as well. This one I've named my drag group and set to be equal to drag group, which is the name of the drag group class. Then we simply add all of our drags as parameters instead of two of our brackets to make sure that they are added as children to the drag group. Now to add these to the screen, we'll first comment out the previous drags we have already so we don't end up with the same drags twice. We will still use them later on in other examples, so just make sure you don't delete them. Since we added all the drags to the drag group, we can simply add it to the screen by using the add statement. If you want to add the drags separately instead, you can use the add statement as well and simply refer to the names of the variables for the drags. Just remember that some of the drag properties will need a drag group to work. Now when we run this example with the drag group, we can see in the game that all four drags have been added to the screen and can be dragged around. We can see that the drag race property works as well as the drags go on top of each other when we drag them. One thing they might want to do is to have something happen when you drag and drop an item on the screen. In this section, we'll look at how you can do different things to your drags after dropping them by using the property called dragged. Let's make a very simple example to start with, where we want to print a message in Rempire's debug console after any of the drags have been dropped on the screen. If we read the description for this property in the documentation, we can see how to use it. In this case, it says it requires a callback or a list of callbacks that is called when the drag has been dragged. In simple terms, that just means that you have dropped the drag after dragging it. A callback refers to a function that you want to run when this happens. That means we have to create a Python function that does something and then reference its name to the draggable property. To create a Python function, we can create an init Python block, which we do at the top of the script. Inside of this block, we will now add the Python function we want to run when the drag has been dragged. In this case, I have named this function dragged func. In order for this to be a function, it needs to run brackets as well, and then a pair of colons to make a block of code. If we go back to the documentation, we can see that this function needs two arguments or parameters that will contain different values that will be useful to us inside the function. The first one contains one or more of the items that were dragged. 
That's because you can have several drags being dragged at the same time, but we'll get into that later. So this parameter will contain a list of all the drags. You can name this first parameter whatever you want, as it will contain the dragged items either way, but should be accurately describing what it contains to make things easier to understand in the code. I have named this dragged items. The second parameter will contain another drag that the dragged item was dropped onto. If the item we dragged was not dropped onto another drag, then this will just contain the value none instead. This one I have named dropped on. Now let's make the contents of this function quite simple at first, by just adding a print command that will print out a message into Rempy's debug console, which will be hello. Let's now go back to our screen. Firstly, for this, we can just use the drags created with Rempy's scripting language, rather than the variables we created in an earlier part of the tutorial. So we'll go ahead and uncomment them, and instead comment out the add statement here. We can now add a dragged property to one or more of our drags, and then refer to a function which we have named dragged func. In this case, I will add this property with a function call to all the drags in the group, so they will all run the same function when they have been dropped. The parameters values for the function will be supplied automatically by Rempy, so we don't have to specify anything else here other than the name of the function. Let's now test this to see how it works. First, if you haven't already, make sure you turn on the console output option in the preferences of the Rempy launcher. This is so we can see the debug console at the same time as we're playing the game. You can read more about what the debug console is on Rempy's website, but in basic terms, it helps to debug your game as you're developing and testing it. Now that we have the game running, we can align these two windows beside each other, just enough so we can see when a message is being printed out. So now if we drag the pink square and drop it, we can see that the message hello is printed out in the console window. Then if we do this with the yellow and green one as well, we can see that that works too. So we know that the function worked as it did what it was supposed to do. Now let's say you would like to do things to this drag after it has been dragged rather than just printing out a message. As I mentioned before, the first parameter of this function contains a list of all the drags that were dragged. Both of these parameters are local variables to the function, meaning you can access the values inside the function by referring to them. Since the dragged items variable contains a list, we can access the dragged item by grabbing the first value of the list. That's because for this example, we're only working with one dragged item, so it will be the only one in the list and will reside at index position 0. If you have joined up several drags together by using the drag joint property, which we'll have a look at later, then this list would contain several drags and each of them would reside in different index positions. Now we can do things with this drag as we have access to it. The drag object has all of its properties inside it, so we can access them as attributes to compare the values or change them. A common thing that many want to do after a drag has been dragged is to check which other drag it was dropped onto. This could be because you want to combine items in some way for your game or for other reasons. Let's say we want to check if the pink square is overlapping the green one after it has been dropped. If you remember, we have set each of the drags to have their own drag name, and because of that, we can now access the names in Python code to compare them. So we can create an if statement that checks if the dragged item has the drag name pink, and if the drag that was dropped on has the drag name green. If this is true, then we can do something else. You can check any other properties as well. For example, maybe you want to know what the drag race value is set to for the drag that called this function. Then you just do the same thing by referring to that property as an attribute and compare its value with an if statement. Not only can you check the different properties values, you can also change them. So as a quick example, if you wanted to change the name of the dragged item that was dropped, you could say that the drag name is equal to pink square instead of pink. Another common thing to do with the drag and drop system is to snap a drag to a different location once it has been dropped onto something else. For this example, let's snap the pink square to the same position of the green square where we drop it on top of it. To snap a drag to a specific location, we can use the snap function. Looking at the documentation, we can see this function takes two parameters, which is an x and y coordinate. For that, we need to know the x and y position of the green drag. If we scroll up a bit in the documentation, we can see that a drag has an x and y attribute we can use to get its current location. The start x and start y attributes, however, contains the starting position of a drag before we started to drag. So now we'll first add the if statement that checks if the dragged item is the pink one and if the drop down drag was the green one. Then inside here, we'll grab the dragged item, use its snap function, and provide it the drop down item's x and y coordinates. 
If we test this now, we can see that the pink drag snaps to the green drag. This doesn't mean, however, that the pink square can't be moved anymore, as we can drag it somewhere else afterwards, if you want. Before you go ahead and test this now for yourself, be aware that you most likely will get an error message as you're dragging and dropping the drag to an empty space. As I mentioned before, the drop down parameter might not actually contain a drag, but instead the value none. This would be in cases where you drop a drag onto something that is not a drag, or if you drop it on a drag that doesn't allow drops. Because of this, we get an error message using the if statement we created before, because RampPy can't find the property or attribute drag name for something that isn't a drag. So to prevent that, we'll first make sure that the drop down variable isn't equal to none. That we can do by creating an initial if statement that the other if statement is inside, like this. Now only if the drop down variable isn't none can the other if statement inside be checked and potentially run its code as well. If we try this now, we can see that the error no longer pops up if you drop the drag onto an empty space. If you set the droppable property to false on the green drag and test the game again, we can see that the pink drag won't snap. That's because now functions like a dragged function will be supplied with the value none as a drop down value. That means our code to snap the pink drag to the green drag inside this if statement won't run. There's also a third optional parameter you can use with the snap function. This one is called delay in the documentation and will cause the drag to essentially animate towards the new location. Here you want to add how many seconds the movement should take and I set it to half a second. Before we test this, we'll make sure the green drag isn't disallowing drops on it first, so we'll remove the droppable property. If we now test this in the game, we can see the drag will move little by little towards the green drag until it has reached its final destination.